Prokaryotic cells turn genes on and off by controlling transcription. Let's remember that the DNA in a prokaryotic cell is just in the cytoplasm since there is no nucleus. What that means is that transcription and translation can actually occur at the same time in prokaryotic cells. So remember that a gene actually includes more than just a protein coding sequence. It also contain, uh, contains elements that are going to control its expression. So there's two elements besides the genes that we need to know about here. And the first is the promoter, which you can see right here. And the promoter is where RNA polymerase is going to bind. Next door, there's an operator. And you can see that the thing that binds to the operator is this separate protein called the repressor. So this whole thing is called an operon, which is a region of DNA that includes a promoter, an operator, and one or more genes that is going to be regulated. Um, operons are only found in prokaryotes because this is a relatively simple way to regulate gene expression, and prokaryotes are very simple creatures. So the first operon we're going to look at is called the LAC operon, and LAC stands for lactose. And if you look at the three genes that are right here, these are genes for enzymes that digest lactose. So this LAC operon, it can turn on and off like a switch. So the repressor, if you notice up here, it's bound to the operator. And if you notice down here, the repressor is bound to lactose. So that means that the repressor can bind to one of two things. It can either bind to the operator on the DNA or to a molecule of lactose if it's present. Based on the bottom picture, you can see that the repressor has a preference to bind to lactose. So that means that given the choice between lactose and the operator, the repressor is going to bind to lactose. So essentially what that means is that in the top situation, which is without lactose, meaning there is no lactose in the cell, you can see that the repressor is going to be bound to the operator, and this is acting like a physical roadblock, and that means that RNA polymerase cannot get to these genes and transcribe them. So this makes sense, because if you look at these genes, what they do is eventually they're going to become enzymes that digest lactose. It doesn't make sense to have enzymes that digest lactose if there is no lactose around in the first place. So if there's no lactose in the cell, then what we're going to do is have the repressor block RNA polymerase from transcribing those genes. So we're essentially shutting the operon off. Down below here, you can see that when lactose is here, it's going to bind to the repressor, and the repressor is no longer bound to the operator. That means that RNA polymerase can now go and transcribe those genes, and they can eventually get translated into their proteins, which are enzymes, to digest the lactose. The TRIP operon is another type of operon that is found in prokaryotes. TRIP stands for tryptophan, and it's one of the 20 amino acids. This operon acts very similar to the one that we just saw, but the uh, way that it acts is actually the exact opposite, and that's because the enzymes necessary, and it's right here, um, the enzymes that are being made here are actually for tryptophan synthesis, so that means making tryptophan. That means that this time, if tryptophan is absent, like what we have up here in this first scenario, if tryptophan is absent, then it makes sense that we would want to turn this operon on so that we can make more uh, tryptophan with those enzymes. If tryptophan is present in the cell, then we don't need to make any more tryptophan and we should turn the operon off. So the bottom scenario represents when tryptophan is present. You can see that when it's present, it binds to the repressor and we get this shape change that occurs. When that shape change occurs, that allows the repressor to bind to the operator and it blocks transcription from happening. Gene expression in eukaryotes is much more complicated, and that's because different sets of genes are expressed in different types of cells. So gene expression is pretty easy if you're a prokaryote. You can use these operons, and it's very easy. It's an on-off situa situation, but that's because prokaryotes are just one cell. Eukaryotes are many cells, and many, uh, we mean like trillions of cells like us, and so that means that we've got a lot of cells in which we need to regulate gene expression. So eukaryotic cells, they're going to control the process of gene expression expression at many different points in their DNA. 
So transcription in eukaryotes is controlled by two elements. It's controlled by regulatory DNA sequences and protein transcription factors. And these both occur in different combinations in different types of cells. So eukaryotes have many types of regulatory DNA sequences, but one that's shown here in the picture as an example is called the enhancer. The enhancer is a sequence of DNA that helps to regulate gene expression, hence the name of regulatory sequence. You can see that the thing that's interacting with it are the transcription factors. So those transcription factors, which are these pink balloon looking things, are going to interact with these regulatory sequences, and that's going to either increase or decrease the rate of transcription. So different regulatory sequences can speed up transcription or slow down transcription depending on the need for that certain protein or proteins. And so um, there is another type of regulatory sequence called a silencer, and its job is to decrease the rate of transcription. So if the operon that we talked about earlier, if that was analogous to a light switch being turned on or off, then I like to... Um, summarize the gene expression in eukaryotes by saying that it's kind of like a dimmer switch. So think about the dimmer switch that you probably have in your um, dining room at home where you can either turn up the lights or turn down the lights. And that's more what eukaryotes are going to do. They're going to either speed up or slow down the rate of transcription, but it's very rarely going to be a simple on-off situation in any or all cells. When we're talking about transcription and translation in eukaryotic cells, then we need to add in one more step before the mRNA that was made through transcription can leave the nucleus and get translated into a protein. So we have a process that's called RNA or mRNA processing, and this is going to occur in the nucleus before the mRNA leaves the nucleus. So this is only in eukaryotes since we're talking about a nucleus. So the first modification that happens is that a cap is added to each mRNA molecule, and this helps the mRNA strand bind to a ribosome out in the cytoplasm, and it also prevents that mRNA strand from being broken down in the cytoplasm before it gets a chance to be translated. So you can see right here, there's that cap that got added. We also add a tail to the end of the mRNA transcript, and literally the tail, sometimes you'll see it later on, like if you take AP Bio or even in college, it's actually called the poly A tail because it literally is a bunch of adenine nucleotides over and over again. And basically what this does is it protects the actual message of the mRNA from being degraded in the cytoplasm. And that's because there's actually a lot of enzymes in the cytoplasm that would actually break this down. And so this way, those enzymes, if they do break down anything, Thing, they're just going to start breaking down all these random adenines here at the end. So the last thing that we have to do is we have to remove something called introns. And so in eukaryotes, um, exons are the nucleotide sequence uh, segments that actually code for parts of the protein. So you can remember that exons are expressed. Introns are named because they're called the intervening sequences, and they need to be removed before the mRNA can be translated into a protein. So introns get removed before it leaves the nucleus, and so you can see that here the first, the mRNA that was actually transcribed, once we take out these two introns right here, it's going to be much shorter once we remove some of those sequences, and then the exons get spliced together is how we say that, um, and so that's going to be this final prod product is what we call the processed mRNA. So scientists are still a little unclear about the role of introns. Um, some think that it may help regulate gene expression. Some think that it may protect DNA against harmful mutations. And that's because that hopefully if there was a mutation, it's going to get removed as an intron before it makes its way um, out of the nucleus on the mRNA transcript and, and over to translation. And then the other reason scientists are surmising that we have these um, introns and exons is that by um, taking out different combinations of introns, we can cut the DNA or the RNA up at various points and we can result in um, different proteins. And so some think that um, introns actually increase genetic diversity without increasing the size of the genome itself.